We're here with head women's soccer coach Patrick Gilliam. The Lady Trojans are headed to their third straight NAI, NAI national tournament. Uh, found out who their matchup was today in the selection show. They're going down to Kansas to face the number six seeded Benedictine College. Coach, can tell us a little bit about the matchup this weekend? Yeah, Benedictine's had a great year. Um, as uh, just a single loss, uh, a conference loss, and I think it was just maybe a little blip in the middle of a, a great season. They've uh, they dominated the Heart of America Conference, and then they uh, had a good win earlier this year against Spring Arbor, and just uh, I know they made a good run last year at the national tournament at the final site as well. So um, Lincoln's done a great job out there. He's got them really rolling, and uh, they rolled through their conference tournament. Haven't had much time with the show being just this morning to really look into them, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best to to scout and, and prepare our ladies uh, to be ready for Saturday. And you're coming off of uh, yet another CCAC tournament championship, your second in three years. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your run through the playoffs there this past couple weeks. Yeah, we, uh, you know, what we did in securing that first round home game, I think, was maybe one of the biggest things. The, the final games of the conference season, um, the win over Olivet on senior day, having St. Francis lose their last game gave us that fourth seed. And to be at home, uh, I think we're a team that, you know, plays well at home, we play well on grass. And, uh, and so uh, to have that home game, to get into that four spot, to be able to get St. Francis at home was big. Um, that game was interesting. Uh, we jumped out to a huge lead and uh, looked outstanding. And then two goals before halftime made it close. The second half was pretty uneventful. And then we got what we thought was the clincher to make it 4-2. And right off the kickoff, they make it 4-3. to three. So it was kind of a, a goofy game, but uh, advanced. We talked to the ladies afterwards and we're like, not maybe the way you draw it up, uh, having a three-goal lead, surrendering that, uh, getting a goal to supposedly clinch the game and have them run right down the field off the kickoff. But we talked about the importance at this time of year just advancing. Um, you can break down the film and say, hey, let's get better from that. But if you don't advance, you don't have another game. And so we were excited just to advance. And then Judson stunning St. Ambrose in penalty kicks was, it gave us another home game. Uh, we didn't have to travel. Um, obviously, Judson has done did some amazing things this year with a small team and um, staying healthy and being competitive. And uh, but you know they were a little more beat up than normal. Uh, had lost a key player to injury. We got to play at home again, and uh, you know and, and avoid the number one seed, the regular season champ in St. Ambrose. So that was a real blessing. And then uh, you know you're going to have to go through somebody good to win the whole thing. And um, somebody really good at the top of the conference and we we had to do that with uh, Olivet who's perennially the last five or six years um, been the top team in the conference and so uh, we had to get them again had to go to their place where they were undefeated this year um, so real proud of how the ladies played um, but our conference has gotten it's so much deeper now I mean you look at Judson I think that's the first time an eight seed has knocked off a one in the conference tournament St. Francis, a great team, um, Stritch, Robert Morris, um, everybody that, you know, pretty much made the playoffs could have won the tournament. And, um, but we knew that probably at some point the road would go through um, Bourbon A and have to play Olivet, and, and uh, the ladies played really well. Um, tight game, we dominated, I think, most of the first half, and then the first 20 minutes of the second half, they were, they were everywhere, and uh, we were able to sustain that, had some key substitutes give us big minutes, and Got a goal with about 15 minutes left to win it. And then last week, uh, the all-conference teams came out. You had five total all-conference players, one first team, four second team. Just talk a little bit about those girls and how they played this season. Yeah, Morgan has. Uh, Morgan was our first teamer, Morgan Elzinga, and you know Morgan. Uh, I think in the last two years has really developed her work rate, her fitness, those things, uh, her aggressiveness, and uh, just intensity level, her toughness have always been kind of hallmarks of her game, but I think in the last two years she's raised her game technically and uh, that allowed her to get the honors she got last year and then to be a first teamer this year. And um, She was scoring at the beginning of the year when we weren't getting much scoring overall. She uh, was the first one to kind of settle in and start to put the ball in the net consistently. Um, with our second teamers, um, with Sam, you know, defending conference player of the year, but uh, had surgery in the off season and, you know, uh, got off to a slow start. You know, that, Doctors and the rehab people and the trainers said that you know they thought a lot of it was just bouncing back from surgery and uh, uh, you know and I think that got her off to a little bit of a slow start but I'd say from the Cardinal stretch game on when she scored the goal to win it in overtime 
it's kind of where the team really started to begin to peak, and then I think she's been on quite a goal scoring streak and a, just a point scoring streak. She's been assisting goals and contributing in multiple ways and, and looked a lot more like uh, how she did a year ago, um, and probably since the stretch game. Um, Gina, uh, you know, I said it in, you know, when she was nominated for all conference, I mentioned to the other coaches, I said, I said she might be our most valuable player this year. You know, probably has played, if not the most minutes, close to it. Um, she's one of those players that uh, when she's on the field, she doesn't necessarily jump out at you like other players do. But if she wasn't on the field, you would notice the gap immediately. And uh, and so I, uh, she made second team. I told her I'm extremely proud of her, and I felt very well deserved. And then Michelle and um, Kelsey in the back line, I, I think – uh, really, Cat could have been in there as well. Um, I mean, Cat, uh, Bakash, we just, our back line, when we weren't scoring at the beginning of the year, kept us in games. And when we were starting to score, um, but not at the level we have been of late, um, they kept games close and, and allowed us to, you know, snag a game like Cardinal Stritch in overtime. Uh, because I think most of the season we were giving up a goal or, or, or shutting teams out. And when you're giving up just a goal or less a game, you don't need a whole lot to grab a point or grab three points. And so um, I think it's probably, it speaks to our season that we had two backs out of our back four um, make the all-conference team. And like I said, Kat, Taylor, Sarah Schufer, McKenzie, and goal, really um, any of them could have been there as well. All right, well, thanks, Coach. Number 19 ranked TIU Trojans traveling to Kansas this weekend to face the number six Benedictine College in the first round of the NAI championships. Thanks, Coach, for joining us. Uh, good luck this weekend. Thanks, Ian.